Okay, I'm going to get started here. Um, if you'll notice, I guess I should welcome everyone back. Uh, hope everyone had a good break and uh, had a good New Year's. Hopefully this year will be better than the last one, but who knows. Uh, first, I want to uh, let you know that to start this assignment this time, we're not going to go through our traditional CS First page. So you're going to have to make sure that you sign into Scratch. And I've already posted down here, uh, Beat the Goalie Day 1. And that's how we're going to start this. So you just click on this link here. After I post this video, I'll put the link for the video under here. Um, so that you can go back and watch it if you need to. So you just start by clicking this link. And if you haven't signed into your CS first, you'll need, or your uh, Scratch page, you'll need to use your CS password from the CS first at our classroom um, and sign in. And then click Remix. And then we're going to rename this first name, last initial, and we're going to call it Beat the Goalie. Okay, so I think you kind of have an idea of how or of what we're going to do today. Um, our goal for this game is going to be that we get the soccer ball past the goalie. Uh, from here on out, we're going to do basically nothing but games, as opposed to some of the other stuff we've done so far. Um, so our goal today is going to get started on, going to be to get started on this game, uh, which is going to be getting the ball past the goalie, which in this case is a penguin. All right, well, the first thing that I need to do is I'm going to have to make this ball so it moves. So I'm going to make sure that I've clicked on this sprite with the soccer ball. And I can tell because it's in the upper right-hand corner of my code box. And I need to first designate how I'm going to get the ball to move forward. So the way that I'm going to have the, you kick the ball is to be uh, pushing the space bar. Additionally, we're going to start by having the ball move on its own right and left. And so I'm going to have that start whenever the green flag is clicked to start the code. And then I'm going to have the ball move. So 10 steps. And if I just jump, drop that in there, the ball moves 10 steps. So it's not a continuous movement as we've seen before. So I'm going to put a repeat code in here. In this case, I don't want to just drop a regular repeat code in. I want to make it so that I put a repeat until in. And I want this ball to move 10 steps until something happens. And it's going to be until I uh, Click the space bar. So we're going to go key space pressed and drop that in there. So now when I click the green flag, this ball should move to the right non stop. And you see, once it hits the edge, we have a problem. It just stops there. And it's going to move until I click the space bar. So even if I drag this back over and click it, now when I hit the space bar, it just stops. So that's exactly what we had it, uh, and we intended it to do. Okay, what I don't want is to have it continue to go off the page and then come to a dead stop there. So what I'm going to add to this now is I'm going to make it so that it's going back into motion. If it's on the edge, it bounces. It's just going to move it back to the left. Now every time it hits the edge, it bounces between the left and right edges. So this is going to continuously do this until I hit the space bar, which stops. Okay. But we haven't scored a goal at all yet. 
As a matter of fact, the ball has only moved left and right as opposed to up and down. So now that I have all of this in place, I'm going to look at moving my Y. So now if I go down to change Y by 10, whenever I click this, and I just click it, you're going to see that it goes until, well, it's going to go on forever, basically. And in this case now, I'm going to put a repeat code in so that whenever I click this, it changes by 10, and it does it 10 times. You notice that when the ball is at the bottom of the screen, if it's only doing it 10 times, it doesn't even make it all the way to the goal line. So I'm going to need to change how much, how many times it repeats this code. And I'll make it 15 to try. And now you can see it crosses the line. Now if I just uh, attach this to the other one. Yes. So now if I start this program over and click the green flag, by attaching to this now, it makes the Y move when it's supposed to uh, after the space key is pressed. So it's going to bounce back and forth. And once the space key is pressed, it goes all the way up. And stops. So it's made it past our white line, which means this would be a goal. If I click the green flag again, you notice we have a problem. It just keeps moving within the goal. Which is not ideal because it basically means that the game is over. So now I need to put a piece of code in to uh, remove that problem for us and to take us back to the original. So then every time I click the green flag, it resets and brings the ball back down to here. If you'll remember from our, some of our other projects, this is the Y up and down. This is the X left and right. And my lowest X is... I think it's 220 or something like that. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to reset this so that when the green flag is clicked, it goes to this position here. And so I'm going to go back into motion. And I'll drop a go to X and Y in. So that every time now it's going to come back to that spot when I click the green flag. So this comes back to the bottom of the bottom left corner of the screen and starts over going left and right. Okay, so, so far, we've made it so that we can kick the, goal, kick the ball and uh, make a goal. But there's no way to know whether it's a goal or not. If I kick the ball there, it then hits the penguin, and it still looks like a goal because it's gone beyond the white line. In this case, though, the penguin would have stopped it, it being a goalie. we need to make it so that uh, a decision is being made as to whether it's an actual goal or not. So notice that my penguin is the official goalie because that's the name of the uh, sprite that it's on. And so I'm going to drop a new control in. And I'm going to make it an if else. So 
So if something happens, then something else happens, uh, else or otherwise, it would be another outcome. This makes it so that we can have two different outcomes that occur. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a I'm not uh, new sensing it. I'm going to make it so that if it's touching instead of the mouse pointer, I'll make it goalie. So if it's touching the goalie, then what happens? And I can make it to a sound. I'll make it start the sound of rattle. And I have the sound shut off so you won't be able to hear it. I don't think. But when I click this, now if it hits the goalie, it's going to make a rattling sound. You'll hear it on your code uh, whenever you do it. Additionally, I don't want to just have to uh, have the volume on to understand uh, what's happening there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a broadcast message as well. Uh, and I'm going to drop that right in. And I'm going to set up a new message called save. Because that's what it's called when the goalie makes a stop. It's called a save. So if it touches the goalie, it's going to make the rattle sound. And it's going to broadcast a message, save. Which is going to go to the goalie. So now when I click on the goalie. drop a new code in for it that says whenever I receive save so that's the message that gets broadcasted so whenever it receives save I will make it say save for I'm going to make it either one or two seconds just to let you know that uh, the goalie has made the save whether you have the sound on or not. So now I want to click on the green flag and run through this. It hits the goalie. The goalie says save. There's an additional sound that's being made so that I know I did not score a goal. Which is going to take us to our next portion of this. Let's click back on the soccer ball. If it, uh, if the save is made, it makes a rattling sound. So I'm going to make a new sound, and I'm going to do start sound cheer. If it doesn't hit the goalie, so if it's touching the goalie, it starts to set with the rattling sound, and the goalie will say save. If it doesn't hit the goalie or else to so start the sound cheer and I'm going to put a new message in I'm going to do broadcast and instead of save this time I'll do new message which is goal now I'll click on the penguin when I receive code in. And make it say goal for one second. So 
So now the game should be functioning like an actual soccer game. Whenever I click the green flag, the ball should move from left to right and bounce back. If it goes past the penguin or doesn't touch the penguin or goalie, however you want to think about it, then it should give me a goal and it'll make a cheering noise. Uh, the penguin will also say goal. If it hits the penguin, then it'll give me a rattling noise and it'll say save. Now it says goal because it was a goal scored, and that would be a save. All right, that's a good place to stop for today. Uh, tomorrow we're going to add some aspects to the game um, that will make it a little more competitive so that you can actually have two people playing it, having someone control the goalie and someone control the soccer ball.